The Magic School Bus Going Batty, a book about bats. I wonder where Miss Frizzle will be flying off to tonight. You never know, I always thought Miss Frizzle was a little batty. Our teacher, Miss Frizzle, loves field trips. In fact, she loves them so much, she even took our parents on one. It all started on parents' night. We were all busy putting up our nocturnal animals display in the classroom. Everywhere you looked, there were animals that come out at night. Owls, possums, raccoons, and moths. The place looked great. The only thing missing was Miss Frizzle, and our parents would be there any minute. Suddenly, the classroom door swung open and a stranger rushed in. I want to suck your blood. Gulp. Poor Arnold. He thought the visitor was a real vampire but it was only Ralphie in disguise. Ralphie pulled off his mask and laughed. Knock it off, Ralphie, Keisha scolded him. There are no such things as vampires. Ralphie shook his head. That's what you think, he argued, but bats are just vampires in disguise. And to prove it, Ralphie read to us from his vampire comic book. The vampire looked around the room of half humans, half bats, and said, attention, my beloved children. At last, the moment I've been waiting for is here. We didn't pay too much attention to Ralphie. We still had to prepare a display in the attic too. We climbed the stairs, carrying stuffed possums, coyotes, nighthawks, and bobcats. Whoa, it's dark up here, Wanda exclaimed. Uh, why don't I go get a flashlight, Ralphie offered. Keisha laughed. What's the matter, Mr. Vampire Expert? Afraid of the dark? I'm not afraid, I just can't see, that's all, Ralphie said. Maybe you can't see, Ralphie, Carlos said, but that bat up there can. A small brown bat hung upside down from one of the attic beams. The little guy was fast asleep. Wow, Dorothy Ann said excitedly, a real creature of the night. Whoosh! The bat, the bat woke up and flew right over our heads. Just then, we heard a creaking noise coming from the wooden beams above. There was a blast of wind. Someone, or something, swung down from above. It was a large creature, half human and half bat. Good evening, class, the creature said in a scary Transylvanian accent. We all breathed a big sigh of relief. It was just Miss Frizzle, dressed like a bat lady. I see you found my creature of the night, Miss Frizzle said, pointing at the bat. Come, don't be afraid. Let me show you the secrets of being nocturnal. When you are a creature of the night, you wear the color of night so you won't be seen by your enemies. You stay hidden until the sun has set and you feed only during the night. So dark of night and keen of craft of all night flyers, the masters of bat. That's just the kind of thing a vampire would say. Ralphie, you read too many comic books. Beep, beep. Outside, we could hear the magic school bus signaling Miss Frizzle. Our parents had arrived. We were all excited that Miss Frizzle would finally meet our parents, except Ralphie, that is. Ralphie was convinced, convinced Miss Frizzle was a vampire. Ralphie, stop being such a pain in the neck. You think I'm a pain in the neck? Just wait. Your attention, please, Miss Frizzle called. I thought for the parents only portion of the evening, we might go someplace a little more breathtaking. We all stared at her. A field trip for our parents? Miss Frizzle turned and headed toward the magic school bus. Come along, I won't bite. And don't you worry about the children. They'll be taken care of. That was all Ralphie needed to hear. Yikes, we're next, he gasped. I wonder where Miss Frizzle's taking them, Tim asked as he watched our parents drive off in the magic school bus. Vroom! Just then, Liz pulled up on a very strange looking motorcycle, complete with sidecars. I don't know, Ralphie said, leaping into a sidecar, but we have to find out. We each buckled ourselves into a sidecar, with Liz in the driver's seat. We followed the magic school bus way into the country and across a narrow road that led to an island. The bus stopped in front of an old, crumbling castle. Follow that bus! My thoughts exactly. 
We watched through the bushes as Miss Frizzle opened the castle doors. A swarm of bats zoomed out into the dark night. Why would Miss Frizzle bring our parents to a place full of bats? Wanda asked. And mosquitoes, Dorothy Ann added, swatting at a bug. Because she's a vampire, that's why, Ralphie said. Ralphie, Keisha said, Miss Frizzle can't be a vampire because vampires don't exist. I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation for all this. And I'm, sure, and I'm going to find out what it is. She ran up to the castle doors. Wanda tried opening the door, but the knob came off in her hand. We certainly weren't getting into the castle that way. Admit it, Ralphie, Keisha said. This vampire thing is a bunch of junk. Ralphie peered into a nearby window. Oh yeah? Then explain why Miss Frizzle is making our parents drink blood. Keisha moved over to next to Ralphie and looked through the window. Hold it, she called back to us. That's not blood. It's tomato juice. Carlos slapped at his arm. Get away, you bloodsuckers, he yelled. Vampires, Ralphie asked nervously. No, mosquitoes, Carlos answered. A few bats swooped down from a nearby tree. More bats, Ralphie screamed. To the creatures of the night, long may we fly together. We watched in fear as the bats flew closer and closer. One bat circled above Arnold's head. It opened its mouth and captured a mosquito in midair. The bats don't want to eat us, Phoebe said. They want to eat the mosquitoes, which proves they aren't vampires, Keisha exclaimed, looking straight at Ralphie. We peeked in the window of the castle. Miss Frizzle led our parents around the corner and into the next room. Hundreds of tiny pink bat babies hung from the ceiling. Aren't those bat babies cute? Phoebe asked. Keisha pointed to a mother bat feeding one of her young. See, Ralphie, she explained, bats are mammals, not vampires. Their babies drink milk, not blood. Ralphie looked through the window. His face turned white. Get down, he whispered. The frizz is coming. Ralphie raced across the moonlit courtyard to the magic school bus. Ralphie, what are you trying to do? Wanda cried out. Get us out of here, Ralphie called out from the driver's window. That seemed like a good plan. We followed Ralphie onto the bus. There was, however, one slight problem with Ralphie's plan. Ralphie didn't know how to drive. He looked at the dashboard. He spotted a button with a bat on it. Ralphie pushed the button. The bus spun around wildly. Nice one, Ralphie. You turned the bus into a bat. And this is turning into a field trip. Ah! The magic school bus sprouted black wings. Its windshield grew eyes and ears popped up from its fenders. The magic school bus had become the magic school bat. It was dark outside. We couldn't see a thing. What if we crashed into something? Arnold asked. Uh-oh. Big trees at 12 o'clock, Wanda called out. We didn't need to worry. The bus... The bus flew easily between the trees. Awesome. How does the bus keep from running into stuff? Carl asked. It's a bat. That's how. Keisha answered. I, it knows how to get around in the dark. I think it has something to do with that pinging sound. Every time the magic school bat opened its mouth, it let out a high-pitched ping. Then its ears would wiggle. I think it's listening to the echo of each ping, Tim said. I don't know about you guys, but that pinging is killing my ears, Arnold moaned. He put on some earmuffs to muffle the sound. Keisha knew that the pings were really important. When the sound hits an object and bounces back, she explained, the bus hears the echo and knows the object is there. It uses echoes to locate, Phoebe thought out loud. Echo location! Bats don't need to see with their eyes, they see with their ears. Cool, Wanda said. Bats use sound to get around. Come on, Ralphie, admit it, Keisha urged. Bats are cool, and if you were a night animal, you'd want to be one. I would not, Ralphie answered quickly. Then he thought about it. A bat could fly back to the castle in the dark, find a way inside, and save his parents from Count Frizzula. The thought of his mom turning into a vampire made Ralphie so determined that he pushed all the buttons on the dashboard. Ralphie's finger landed on a button that had a picture of a kid with bat wings on it. Before we knew it, we'd all turned into bats. 
This wasn't exactly what I had in mind, Ralphie admitted, but the rest of us thought turning into bats was kind of exciting. I love being a bat. I can go up to 60 miles per hour or snag a moth on the wing with your wing. Arnold didn't seem to be having any fun. I wish I could turn off the moon, he said with a shiver. Its light is giving me the creeps. Suddenly, Carlos screamed out into the darkness. Owl alert! Owl alert, Arnold asked. Just then, a great horned owl swooped down from a high tree branch. He tried to use its sharp, cl strong claws to capture Arnold and Tim. Yikes! It was a good thing Arnold and Tim were hanging upside down because they could move quickly. They flew out of the owl's way, leaving the big bird with nothing to grab but air. Then they headed to a nearby tree where the rest of us were hanging around. That's why we bats avoid light. Our enemies can see us in it, Keisha explained to Arnold and Tim. What if Ralphie's right and the frizz is a vampire? I'm trying not to think about that. At last, the moment I've been waiting for has come. We heard Miss Frizzle say, prepare yourselves, who would like to be my first victim? Take me, Miss Frizzle, one of the grown-ups called out. Keisha could barely believe her super sensitive bat ears. Her grandmother was volunteering to be Miss Frizzle's victim. Ralphie was right, the Frizz was a vampire. Keisha flew into an air shaft that led inside the castle. Don't you dare bite my grandmother, she cried out. We couldn't let Keisha battle Count Frizzula alone. We followed her down the shaft and used echolocation to fly safely through the castle. In the distance, we could hear the grown-up's voice. I can't believe I let you do this to me, Keisha's grandmother said. My neck will be sore for a week, Ralphie's mother added. Maybe we should have stayed home tonight, Arnold's mother groaned. Will the kids suffer the same fate we did, Phoebe's father asked. The frizz laughed. Of course, they're mine too, aren't they? What will we do? We can't let the frizz get away with this. We have to make sure she never does this again, Ralphie whispered to Keisha. We zoomed into the next room and discovered. Miss Frizzle hadn't turned our parents into bats at all. She had simply shown them how it feels to be a bat by helping them hang upside down from a chandelier. Miss Frizzle, as my Keisha always says, your field trips are simply magical. Is it just me or do those bats look like our kids? She doesn't know the half of it. We had to leave before Miss Frizzle spotted us. We swooped past the chandelier and didn't stop flying until we were safely outside. Ralphie looked embarrassed. I'm sorry, he said. I was really wrong about the frizz. She's not a vampire. She's just a really good teacher who gets wrapped up in her work. Then Ralphie did something amazing. He admitted he was wrong about bats too. Okay, they're not vampires, he said. They're nocturnal animals that use echolocation to fly at night. They come out at night to feed on insects, not human blood. Ralphie turned to Keisha. Happy now, he asked her. Keisha may be happy, but the bat news is we're still bats, Carlos joked. Thanks for reminding us, Carlos, Phoebe giggled. Beep, beep. Keisha may be happy, but the bat news is we're still bats, Carlos joked. Thanks for reminding us, Carlos, Phoebe giggled. Beep, beep. The magic school bus flew by with Liz at the wheel. It stopped just long enough for us to fly on board. Before we knew it, we were transformed from bats back into kids. What do you know? It's our kids, Arnold's father said as he left the castle. Ralphie's mother looked him squarely in the eye. I know that guilty look, Ralphie, she said. What's going on? Miss Frizzle put her arm around Ralphie. Oh, I'm sure they were just hanging out, she answered with a smile. Right, Miss Frizzle, Ralphie agreed. And bats all.